sewing friends. Welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I'm going to be quilting a baby quilt that I made just about just a couple weeks ago and I'll be quilting it really simply but then I'm going to go back and I'm going to add some hand quilting just a few places around the hearts. It doesn't take very long but it just gives it an extra special bit of love for that new little baby. Let's get started. The first thing I did was I got my adhesive spray, my 505, which information is in my description box in my Amazon shop. I have a link to this spray. And as you can see, I used some leftover pieces of batting that I just carefully placed right next to each other. The um, edges are right next to each other. And then I sprayed and I smoothed that quilt top right on top of the batting and I did the same with the backing. After getting my quilt sandwich ready to go, I took it to my machine and I gave myself a little bit bigger stitch length and I am going to stitch through all of the seams in this quilt. It's called Stitch in the Ditch. As you can see, I'm just using the all-purpose foot that came with my machine to do these stitching lines. I know that some machines won't perform as well unless you're using a walking foot, but my machine seems to do just fine. I did pull out my walking foot a little bit later in the video. In just a minute, you'll see I did try it to compare, but it requires me to go a bit slower, and I kind of like to sew quickly through these quilts. And here's my walking foot. I gave myself a note a long time ago. I wrote on there to slow down because like I said, the walking foot doesn't want me to go too quickly. I tried a few seams with it. It seems to look just like the other foot that I used. So I went back so that I could go a little bit quicker and used my regular all-purpose foot. After getting the quilt quilted through all the seams, I trimmed away the batting and the excess backing, and I'm going to work on the binding. I wanted to show you my little bracelet, it just happens to match my project. <laughs> hearts on my bracelet and hearts on my quilt. A fun coincidence. After joining the ends of my strips of binding, I'm going to press that long strip in half and I'm going to fold the edge, the very first part of my binding. I'm going to fold it down and I'm going to make myself sort of a little pocket. In the end, I'm going to tuck in the, the other end of the binding when I get all the way around. So I will leave the this open. I will not sew on this quite yet. I'm going to wait until I get to the end. So about four inches away from the end of the binding, I'm going to start adding the binding to the back of my quilt. When I get to the corner, I'll stop about a quarter inch away from the end. I will pivot and then I will sew off the corner so I'll have a little angled seam there. 
the last couple stitches sort of I sew off the corner and then I'll turn my quilt I'll fold that binding straight up and then straight down and then I'll begin sewing at the very top of that quilt starting on the edge and then I'll just continue all the way around the same way When I get to the place where I started with this binding, I'm going to stop before finishing up and I'm going to take the, the end of that tail and I'm going to tuck it right into that folded edge there. I'm going to pin and then I'll sew right across and I will have all my raw edges inside. So my binding is all attached all the way around on the back. I'll turn my quilt right side up and roll the binding to the front and then I'll just top stitch all the way around. Once I have the binding on, I'm ready to add those special stitches. I use a thimble, some Thread Heaven for my embroidery floss here and I'm using three strands and an embroidery type needle with a larger eye and I'm going to put some big stitches around all of my applique hearts. I looked around for Thread Heaven online and I don't see it so maybe it's not sold anymore but I did find some beeswax that is a thread conditioner that helps with tangling and I think embroidery floss sometimes tangles or knots while you're working and the thread heaven or the beeswax would really help out with that. To hide the knot in my thread I'm going to slip my needle to the inside of the quilt and an inch or two away from where I want to begin and I'm going to tug a little so that the knot is now inside my quilt and I'll begin with some big stitches and I'll go all around this heart. As you can see I am now all the way around I added a knot and again I'm going to just tug a little bit so that I can hide that knot inside my quilt and I'll trim the end and we won't have any knots showing. I'm going to go around my hearts with some different colors just have some fun. I wanted these embroidery floss colors to um, stand out a little more than this green one did. I found a pink, a blue, a green, and I'm hoping that they will stand out a little from the fabric that I am sewing on. After getting all the stitches around my applique hearts, I decided to take the pattern, the same pattern I had used for the applique, and draw a heart on one of the lighter colored squares, and I'll be putting another quilting line all around my pencil line here. 
I started out on this light colored square with some bright pink, but it didn't stand out enough, so I took it out and I went ahead and used a bright blue that I preferred. I think it um, stands out a little bit better on this fabric. This little bit of hand applique adds a really special touch to this baby quilt. It doesn't take long to add just a few hand stitches and I think it adds so much. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.